My last video was in April and I said I'm gonna commit to weekly releases and you know now we're in August and I really needed to draw on a lot of willpower and rethink my whole thought process on how I set up videos now that I've moved to a new location, started a new 9 to 5, a usual disclaimer, all things are mine, does not reflect my employer, etc. have to adapt to the fact that it's the summer and my kids are at home all the time and so I got a million excuses to not film videos. So I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in this because a lot of people would be like I'm gonna work out today or today I'm gonna read this book. So as I think about this topic and I mentally self-flagellate, wonder how the hell am I gonna Goku my way through this, I come to realize that it's a very complicated topic that some people are simply predisposed to being distractible like me. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what is willpower, what are its strengths and limitations, and how I manage willpower. Stick around until the very end to hear real life examples of how I do it. Now willpower is essentially emotional energy in its raw form that can be turned into action, but at the same time, it's easily derailed. And according to the American Psychological Association, the definition of willpower is the ability to resist short-term gratification for long-term goals. And as an idea, it's popularized by the famous marshmallow test and for those who don't know what it is the famous marshmallow test was conducted by Walter Mischel who was at Stanford at that time and essentially what he did was put a bunch of kids in a room and put a marshmallow in front of them and tell them hey if you're able to hold off eating that one marshmallow for 15 minutes I'm gonna give you a second one after that and so in that famous experiment some of them were not able to control themselves and took the marshmallow on the spot some of them struggled for a bit and then took it and then some of them were able to distract themselves most of them were like closing their eyes and covering their ears and not looking at it to manage the 15 minutes and at the end they got rewarded and what that study found was for the kids who came in and were able to hold off on the marshmallow eating they found that there were long-term health financial and just overall life success in achieving their goals and the general idea was that if you're able to resist short-term gains for long-term objectives you're gonna win in life because you're able to put off to all the temptations essentially that was what willpower amounts to Walter Mitchell he came up with a theory saying there's a cold system and a hot system the cold system is basically reflective and meanwhile the hot system is more impulsive and emotional so essentially think about having an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other now from the research on willpower there's two fundamental problems of it number one is that it's very inconsistent and unreliable in other words willpower can lose its power get it it's willpower and power so by definition power can be measured by great power and little power and it can lose power for example conditions like fatigue can wear us down this is actually what the book paradox of choice talks about where every day by facing a lot of different choices people eventually go from here to here in terms of their energy and so that's why you see famous people like Steve Jobs he has his uniform back turtleneck and jeans other things like alcohol can also deplete our willpowers and so when I hang out with my friends and they're like you know let's have a glass of red and I'm like okay sure I'll have a glass of red wine but I'm definitely not touching the chips after the glass of red wine uh, I mean the chips and the peanuts and everything I'm just like you know downing them. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that experience as well. So essentially when willpower is depleted, what happens is we are more likely to give in to whatever thing that we would like to resist in the first place. Second problem with willpower is fundamentally motivation requires two things. Number one is drive, which is how strong the engine is and how hard you're going in one direction. The other thing is directionality. Where are you going to steer that motivation? And that's why willpower is drive, but it's not necessarily directionality because at the end of the day, you have a very strong engine but if you're all over the place it's still gonna take a long time to go from point A to point B and many people go hard in the wrong direction and persevere in the wrong direction and that's why I have videos talking about career clarity which you can check out in the cards above. So given these two problems what can we do about it? The quick answer is to have an identity shift. For example if you identify as a gym bro which I did a number of years back then I am not gonna touch alcohol I'm not gonna touch junk food and so on and that was it. I did not need to tap into my willpower pool because it's not even a consideration. However if you don't have that fundamental identity grounded you you have to start tapping into willpower. And here are the practical steps that I'm gonna show you today. Fundamentally, it's about forming habits by shaping your environment. In James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, he talks about there's several things that lead us to certain behavior. There's the cue that leads to the craving, that leads to the response, that leads to the rewards. So essentially you have a cycle where you get cued and then your brain is wired so that you automatically execute a series of steps to get the reward. And the five cues that James Clear identified would be the time, the location, the preceding events, the emotional state, 
and other people around you. The analogy that I like to use for this is like a river rapid, right? Once your boat is on the rapid, you're gonna set down a course. So the picture is you are at a junction. There are a whole bunch of rivers that you could always take your boat down at any given moment because at any one point in time, we can choose to do a whole bunch of different things. There are several variables to this. Number one is what's the engine on your boat? Are you using a paddle or are you using like a full-blown motor engine? And just think of that as kind of like your willpower. Then how much strength do you have in your paddle and how much strength do you have, you know, driving your boat? Both the paddle and the motor would get the job done but it comes at different efficiencies. But the second thing that you can think about is the river itself. If you set down this river, what are the short-term or long-term goals that are coming into place? Also, how strong is that river? Like, is it like the rapids or is it like, there's a very calm river, which you can just you know, essentially paddle your way through or steer off course. And then the third thing is the mouth of the river. Is it close to where your junction is? Are you gonna easily slip in or is it far away or is it blocked off? So the whole point of this picture is that you want to manage these rivers. You want to increase the friction for the undesirable rivers and decrease the friction for the rivers that you want to go on that will set the automated course for you to achieve your long-term goals. And I'd like to know how else we can play with this analogy. So uh, let me know in the comments below. So having said all that, here are some real life examples of how I use willpower. Fundamentally, you want to use the willpower to shape the environment before it even gets to the queue. So for the queue time, what I do is I typically block off 9 to 11 a.m. That's when my brain is the freshest. And that's where I want to block off time so that I can do deep work. So the highest priority items that are going to accomplish my long-term goals, just say no to any meetings that come up during that time. I also avoid opening up my inbox because I know the moment I open up my inbox, it's going to trigger a series of actions where like, oh, I want, I want to click this, I want to click this. Having your work being driven by emails is just a very reactive way of doing things. Now, of course, there are situations where these rules need to be broken, so be mindful of that. An example for the queue location when my kids were younger we didn't want the tv to be a major part of our day-to-day -day. So what we did in our home was actually put the tv in the basement there is no tv in the living room no tv on the second floor it was in the basement kids and basements they kind of don't want to go in there even for adults right if we want to watch tv we need to make the deliberate journey into the basement to turn on a tv and watch it with the kids it's not a complete rejection towards the tv but it's more like if we're turning on the tv it's got to be strategic for the third cue which is the preceding events what i do is i turn off notifications so for any notification for email for example i turn it off completely recently i deleted all my social media apps again but one time i turn on instagram my wife's like oh do you feel that's a good use of your time and i'm like oh shoot you know what you're right. So I deleted all of them. And so it's kind of like a vicious cycle where I delete and install, especially once I notice it go out of hand. And a quick way to do a diagnosis of this is actually go into the time tracking. You can see what apps you're using the most and you can also see how much time you're spending on them and just delete those apps. For the fourth cue, which is emotional states, one example would be alcohol or chips. Chips are the bane of my existence. They're like legalized drugs for me. Oftentimes I make the decision to not buy chips or if I buy chips, I put them in a cupboard and I keep it closed. It's kind of a out of sight, out of mind situation. Finally, the fifth one would be other people. For this one, I would say definitely check out my video on setting strong boundaries of people, especially if these people are not good for you and so on. So basically what I do with willpower is instead of battling the habit itself, what I did was I managed the friction of my environment so that I can either remove it completely or manage it. I'm not exhausted from fighting a whole bunch of different temptations. When it does come up, I have plenty of willpower to just knock it down. So there is still a time and place for willpower. But yeah, I'd love to know, what is the biggest friction point for you right now? Perhaps I can make a video on it. So let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more that's coming up in the future. In my upcoming two videos, which I've already scripted and you know, my willpower, got me on course to do that. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for when it drops. Hope this video was helpful to you. I'll see you around.